If your current physique looks something like this, you're going to be very glad that you clicked on this video. I've got a lot in store for you. And we're going to show you how we managed to get our client deck from this current starting point to this, how he's looking as of yesterday. That was a 16 week transformation where we got him bigger and leaner. If you're re back uh, reviewing the channel again for the second time, thank you for coming back. And just to address the elephant in the room, I have a black eye. If you're new to the channel, welcome. But also just know I'm not a thug. I just like sparring. Sparring is on uh, Fridays and Saturdays. And it was a good sparring. And uh, ultimately, we paid the price by getting a black eye. So just to address the elephant in the room. Now, why this video is going to be so exciting for you is I don't actually think the specifics of how we got there are spoke about online too often. So we're going to break down the the real details on how we actually managed to get this result. When I'm not going to leave anything out. I will explain to you from start to finish where he started, what decisions we made, why we made them, how we trained, how we ate, his calories, everything. You're going to get everything from start to finish packaged up in this video. It's going to be a three-step process, which is going to get us to the goal. Now, my promise to you, if you watch this video till the end, you will know physically how to get bigger and leaner. As long as you just took notes or like, understood the, the process that I'm going to go through. Like, I'm, I'm not going to leave anything out. I'm going to be specific. But obviously, if you, just, if you passively or half ass watch this, you're not going to remember it anyway after. So just be ready to take notes. Just be ready to take down the key points or screenshots or whatever it is you want to do. Make sure you're in a learning frame of mind. Because again, if, if you're new to the channel, I only really deliver videos like this. Because this is how I learn personally. I like to just watch someone that is spitting game, their, their, their uh, text is on screen, no music, no edit, and they just spit the game on how to get there. I take notes, extract, boom, go. If you're watching the channel again, thank you and welcome back. Uh, you know the, the flavor in which we deliver the content on here. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe right now because I will continue to punch out results like this as we go on into the future. You, you know I've already done results uh, videos like this in the past. And I've got a few more coming and they're all slightly different because we're human beings. We're all slightly different. We'll have slightly different starting points, slightly different challenges. And it's worth talking about and giving that value to, to you on, on, on YouTube so you can extract it and then apply it to your own training and ultimately get to the goal faster and live a happier, fucking healthier life. That's why we're all here. So that's my promise to you if you stick around till the end of this video. Let's roll in. We've got a three-step process which is going to allow us to get to the goal. So step one, the nutrition hack. There is a nutrition hack that when you are starting at 17% body fat will allow you to get to this point. And why I, I really like these style of transformations, don't get me wrong, you've seen in the past, or if you check my Instagram, I did I dropped 20 kilos in 16 weeks with, with a guy that was obviously like 25 plus percent body fat. I, I, I really like those transformations. The big scale weight drop, massive transformation, really, really good. That, uh, don't get me wrong, I like them. But where I really do like these transformations is you, you physically got this guy more muscle and you've got him leaner. Now, let me be clear to you, and I will always speak the truth. When you get leaner, you look bigger. Re just remember that, okay? But in this instance, and uh, uh, other results I've done in the past, you, you can't take away that this guy physically has more muscle. If you look at the upper clavicle of the chest, versus where we were here. If you look at the circumference around the arms, the chest here, even the back of the arms here, don't get me wrong, this guy had trained in this photo and he hadn't in this photo, but you can't deny that this guy has more muscle today than he had when he started. But to be clear, when you get leaner, you will look bigger. Just remember that, okay? So, And that's another beautiful thing about getting leaner. So I'll always speak the truth to you. But we can't deny that this guy did build muscle because of the strategies we managed to use. And that's why I like these transformations so much. Because they physically got bigger and leaner in a shorter uh, time frame. And this is the art of body recomposition. This is what a lot of you need to start off with. You see, the way I see body recomposition is kind of like getting a haircut. You like, you've come in, we, do, we trim the fat, we build the tissue, and then, and then you're in a prime position. The body recomp phase, really, it is a priming phase. Because... Once we get you lean and responsive, 8 to 10% body fat, you're in a very sweet space to go on a gaining phase. Now, what else did we do in that time frame? We taught you how to train. We taught you how to lift weights in the exact manner, with the exact tempo, with the exact intensity, with the correct arm path. You've had X amount of time practicing that. Now, if you're lean and responsive to the way your body will utilize carbs and insulin, and you're also more lean and responsive to training stimulus, and you know how to train, 
How do you think your next gaining phase is going to be? Really fucking productive. Do you think you're going to put on a fair amount of tissue in that next gaining phase? Of course you are. But if you started from this and went straight into a gaining phase at 17% body fat, you start to, you know, if you're, if you're not lean and responsive to training stimulus or to carbs and insulin, how's your body going to utilize extra food that you think you need when you're bulking or gaining phase? You're probably going to store a bit more body fat. And because you didn't build that much muscle, well, you didn't start with that much muscle anyway, as you put on more fat and you maybe you do build some, of course you'll build some muscle. If you continue to get stronger, you are building muscle, but you'll look smaller because you'll keep getting a little bit softer and then ultimately fatter and you'll just sack it anyway because you'll just look a lot worse. Like mentally, even if you wanted to bulk from 17% body fat, minimal muscle tissue, I really don't think mo most human beings would have the bandwidth to be like, yeah, yeah, it's all right. I know I'm going to look like awful for the next six months, but it's, it's okay. I'm not, no, no one will do that. I tell you now, you, you have to be an insane style of person to be like, I'm 70% body fat and I'm going to bulk all the way up to 25% body fat. And even then, your ratio of muscle to fat is it's just not really going to serve you that well. So that's why I like these transformations. That's why we need to get the nutrition on point first. So... The nutritional hack. So we're going to go into, first of all, the setup for uh, the client. I'm going to explain what we did to set him up, start point, and why we made certain decisions. So the first thing we needed to do was establish his current body composition. The first thing you need to do is work out, well, how much body fat are we actually carrying? And for sure, he was nowhere near as tight as the guy at 15%. We could not see lines running across the bottom here or any form of intercostal muscle, if you remember the photo that was just on screen. Likewise, it wasn't so soft around here. So we're sat somewhere in between, okay? And we're going to take a, make an educated guess. I believed he was round about 17 or 18% body fat, and that's what I went with. I know his scale weight was sat at 72 kilograms, so it gave us an RMR of 1660, and also, by the way, a lean mass of pretty much 60 kilos. We knew his activity level, but also we needed to be dynamic with his activity level. Now, this guy is a paratrooper, so he essentially will do a lot of carrying of load, uh, a lot of when he's out in the field, like skirting up and down, doing, doing attacks, all that good stuff. So there was times and places where we needed to actually be smart with his nutrition. Um, but for, for the offset, this is how we scheduled his calories. Now, this is the trick I'm going to tell you. So if we've got this guy's activity level and this guy's uh, RMR, it's going to spit out a maintenance target. Perfect. And, and you could work this out roughly from all the calorie calculators online. It's good if you do body fat because it's going to tell you lean tissue. But likewise, if you use calorie calculators online, generally speaking, they, they should put you in the right ballpark figure. Not as good as mine, but you know, you know what I'm saying. So from there, we want to work out, well, what do we want to start him on? Now, this is the trickery that I'm going to tell you that works so well and has worked well with uh, a couple of other results that I've spoke about in the past, and you can see them on my Instagram page. They're actually the, the top two, uh, like center and the right-hand side one, the, the taller guys. So what you want to do is when someone is 17% body fat, and not carrying that much tissue, remember in that weird space, if you're anywhere from like 14, 13, 14, to, to near on 20, let's say 18, 14 to 18%, which a lot of you are, to be honest, because a lot of you train, a lot of you just eat okay with like a little cheat meal on the weekend, maybe a bit of alcohol on the weekend, and you're just around that figure, not horrendous by any stretch of the imagination, but also not really in good condition either. So, this will, if you're sat in this point, this will be really useful information for you. Now you're thinking, well, I'm skinny, but I need to bulk. And then you're also thinking, but I'm soft, so do I need to cut? And the answer is kind of neither. What you want to do is take your maintenance target and come in just below it. And I'm talking just below. So if they, this guy is 2574, you're coming in just 200 calories below it. Not a big deficit, just a slight little deficit. It could even be like, depends on the size of you, it'll be in relation. So it's 0.3 of a percent that we're, we're taking off, if that makes sense. Um, now, why do we do this? For two reasons. Number one, where you don't have much muscle, you need to drive performance in the gym to build it. So you need plenty of energy, you need plenty of fuel to do so. But because you're soft, we are going to have to pull that body fat off. Of course we are. We, we, we cannot accept you being 17% body fat and we're going to need to get you down to 10 or sub 10. So we do know that we need, that needs to come off, but it doesn't want to come off at a fast rate. If I put you in a big boy deficit, you will lose the drive and the energy and the performance in the gym. Maybe after seven or eight weeks, 
but you won't have gained that much muscle. So the body composition, remember the, the art of the ratio of muscle to fat, will not really swing in the favor that we're looking for. That's why we go just in at maintenance. So we sat him here at 23776. Uh, the, the overall macro breakdown will look like this. So just for a flavor, when, when you're piecing your own macros together, you want to work out your lean tissue and times it by 2.4. Generally speaking, if you are 17% body fat, you could still go off one gram per pound of body weight and that would be okay. Um, fats are set to 20% of this target just because, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying go really low fat, but you want to allocate a lot of your, uh, the rest of your calories towards carbohydrates, drive performance in the gym, et cetera, et cetera. So that was the, the initial setup we went for with him. Let's... That, that, and that is really the, the calorie hack. Then we went into two phases. So phase one was roughly about eight weeks. Uh, the goal of that was to just sit him at maintenance. We did not make any changes to the nutrition as we went through. Now, there were, there were times where we had to be smart with his cardio. And we did put cardio in to work four weeks into the plan. But naturally, this guy through his job role was doing cardio anyway. So we needed to sometimes give him food back in. And where... It, he was in the military carrying a bag. Obviously, that is my background anyway, so I live and breathe this. And if, if you are in the military, then what I would say to you is, if you're on a cut or if you're on a recomp and a maintenance phase, if you're going to do a loaded march where you're carrying a pack for 10 miles at 11-minute mile pace, and the pack weighs 15, 16 kilo, you're probably going to need to put some food back in because that will burn a shit ton of calories, but it will, it will skew off the overall week. So then what we did was 50 calories per mile put back in. Still create the deficit, still utilize the cardio that we would have used anyway, but we need to be smart about the way we do this. Then as we pushed into phase two, what we then wanted to do was be a little bit more aggressive with the way we pulled off the body fat because we had a good eight weeks of training. Food is still fairly high. Energy is high. Performance is at its all-time best because he's had eight weeks of perfecting his craft and driving it through the gym. So then what we can do is we can then pull off the body fat now. So then we can start to be a little bit more aggressive. Now, you're not going to just tweak the calories, but what you're going to do is just assess relative to where the scale weight is moving. So track the scale weight, which you'll have all that data anyway. You want to be tracking that scale weight any, anyway. And let's just say, I think over the course of the eight weeks, probably pulled off about a kilo and a half to two kilos. So that's, that's okay. From there, you can go a bit more aggressive. Straight away, look to pull down 200 calories or increase through cardio and be a bit more aggressive with the cardio. I personally am an increased cardio guy unless you have a busy schedule which you just can't do more cardio because I want to keep your food as high as possible for performance in the gym. So, And then you're just going to read the, read, read the body. How's the, how are the photos looking week on week? Are we getting leaner? Is the scale weight coming down? Yes, perfect. Okay, rinse and repeat that uh, amount of food. If it's not, then cool. Pull and make the difference. And then you will keep taking them down and down and down, ultimately until you get to that lean point. And towards the back end, you are being really aggressive and you are in real like peak fat loss as you're getting down towards those leaner levels. Now, what's also important to understand is when I say bigger and leaner, there's always going to be a difference in the scale weight. So I said this guy started at 72 and we actually finished up at 66. Which always baffles people and I do get it. I do get why it baffles because if I looked at the photo on the right probably looks like he's got 10 kilos more on him to be fair but as we said when you get leaner you ultimately will look bigger now just just remember as well you cannot build muscle faster than you can lose body fat and that's why the scale weight will trend down it, obviously it's just physically impossible the fat is just some adipose tissue that can be burnt away on a weekly basis muscle takes obviously you're, you're literally binding new fibers and thickening them up of course it just takes a bit longer so that is why you'll always be leaner or lighter should i say as you get towards the end of the transformation so just to summarize uh, and, and what we didn't go into with the exact foods he ate to be honest you've got your calorie target you you've, you've got your macro target i mean i can i don't think it was going to warrant me telling you that he ate fucking protein oats in the morning and chicken breast and rice at lunch and chicken and pasta eating a meal like ultimately you you can you can f figure out what what protein sources you want relative to the macros you need I, I don't think we need to go into that but likewise if, if you actually want me to i'll make you a full video on 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 what i would say to eat in fact no i lie i've just made a video on how to eat to <laughs> to get lean so like just go and watch that after this and that'll tell you what foods to specifically eat uh, and why so i won't go into that right now 
uh, because we can spit more value in the next phase. The next thing, how to train to get results like this. I'm going to show you, like normally I would say I would miss out the actual exercises, but I'm going to show you every exercise that you should be doing in order to, to get this level of, level of result. Like I can tell you, but I'm just going to show you on screen so you can see it. And I'm going to be more detailed about it. So just so you can walk away and be like, this is what I'm going to do for pull, this is what I'm going to do for push, this is what I'm going to do for legs, arms and delts, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So start off with push. You're going to start with some form of incline, either dumbbell or machine press. This can kind of work the same as dumbbells just because it's plate loading. There's not really that much tension as it gets towards the top. Beautiful stretch at the bottom. And this, this is an exercise you're going to want to put in. If you've got machines, plate loaded machines, fucking utilize them. Dumbbells are great, absolutely. But this is a lot more loadable than a dumbbell. And it's just moving on a fixed plane. So you can really just focus on driving performance through the gym. After we've done incline, you want to be doing some form of flat. And again, I want to see you on some form of a machine like this. These machines are very good because they will hit the muscle in the shortened position. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. The way a machine press is set, where you drive away, normally the plate stack will move away from the ground. That's, that's why it's your tissue that's physically stopping it from falling back down. So I want you to do some form of an incline machine, some form of a flat machine press. Now, I would actually start with some form of a pec deck. The reason is you're going to literally do the function of the chest in isolation, driving the humerus towards the midline of the body, contracting the pecs. Perfect. Perfect exercise to get the load of blood flow in. Then you go into those two exercises. Now, of course, you're going to want to train your chest twice a week. So let's say that was the first session where you're going to do a pec fly, you're going to do an incline machine press, and you're going to do a flat press that's also harder in the shortened position, you want to flip that on its head. So we did a chest and back day, and on that we would make sure we start with pec deck, of course, and then we're going to do a machine incline where it's harder in the shortened position this time, like the way the cable stack is here. And we would do the same for him. Yeah, harder towards the top, beautiful. Which means then we're going to want to hit the muscle in the length and position from a flat perspective. So we're going to utilize dumbbells on, on this exercise here. Likewise, on the other day, if you haven't got a fancy machine, just use incline dumbbell press. Length and position, short and position on both days. Flip them on its head for a nice bit of variety. And also just so you're doing both instead of doing short, short, length, length. Like it doesn't make sense to do that. So that is what you're going to do for your push and your chest and back. But let's go back to the shoulder exercises for the push. So on the push day, I would actually go with a machine shoulder press. And the reason I say that is you've just done a fuck ton of pressing. To go onto a dumbbell, it's just you're going to have to work harder and you're going to be more fatigued at this point in the session because I guarantee you're probably not doing this one of the first exercises. So I, I would, and again, this is good, loads it up in the short position. So I would roll with a machine. Now, what we did was we did push and we did arms and delts as the second time that we would hit shoulders. On the second time we hit shoulders, we would do a dumbbell shoulder press. And that way we would hit short length and we get it twice per week. Same principle that would apply to the shoulder press. Dumbbell lateral raises are going to be in there twice per week. You're going to have them on your push day and you're going to have them on your uh, arms and shoulders day. And you're also going to, on the arms and shoulders day, hit it with a machine as well. Because you want to hit that length and position, which you're not going to get on here. This is all in the shortened position because of gravity and the way the moment arm works. Try it if you can. You see here I've lent against something to stop any swing. You can do it seated. Sometimes it's nice to just do stand up and, and mix it up. Uh, but really just focus on that shortened position, come down slow. And you'll notice I don't really let the dumbbell touch my leg. Reason being, tension just comes off. Now let's discuss what you're going to do for pull and also the back day of the chest and back day that you're going to do. A very underrated exercise and an underused muscle specifically for myself, it was probably the traps, the upper trap region. And the way you're going to fix this is utilizing a cable shrug. Why cable? Well, if you look, to actually train the traps, you don't want to come straight up by your ears. You want to come back in here to actually get that contraction from the traps and the way the origin and insertion sits of the trap muscle. So you're gonna angle yourself back slightly like we've done here and then drive back. One thing I'm guilty of, which I need to perfect, is keeping my arm locked out at the elbow joint. Because if I'm gonna have it a bent, I'm gonna use a little bit of bicep, that's not the aim here. Strap up, load it up nice and heavy, and we wanna really torture those upper trap muscles. Pull-ups or weighted pull-ups, always gonna be a very good exercise that you can utilize. Um, I run this on the back of the chest and back day. 
load it up nice and heavy, just continue to get stronger and stronger. If you're doing body weight, that's fine. Three sets, six to 10, once you hit 10, add some load on and keep rinse and repeating that out. Now, this is an exercise that honestly has blown my lats up. It's a single arm pull down. Beautiful it is, you can align everything in, in the perfect manner. Now, you'll notice how close I keep my arm to the body. And when you train your lats, you want to think about bringing the origin and the insertion together. So it starts down here at your hip and also all the way onto your spine, inserts onto your humerus. Drive your humerus towards your hip and you will fucking toast that lat. No problem. If you train like this consistently, you will fucking toast that lat, let me tell you. Run a minute's rest, then hit the other side, repeat, repeat, repeat. And we've not spoke about rep ranges. Generally speaking, for every exercise we do, we run a top set, a heavy six to 10. We run two back off sets of 12 to 15. Or you might do two top sets if it's a structured and a nice stable machine. Beautiful exercise. Get a bench up, drive your arm against it, keep yourself fixed in nice and tight. Now, a lot of us are weak in this area and it's understandable. Like right now, my posture is probably not the best as I'm delivering this video to you, ironically enough. But one thing we definitely want to do is train that upper back region. We've spoke about the upper traps. Now we're going to look towards the mid, maybe even a little a bit of the lower traps here. We're going to utilize something that supports the chest. Because fuck, if you're trying to do a, bent, a standing bent over row, I really struggle to believe the average trainer cannot curve his back, cannot, keep, cannot curve his upper back, his lower back and upper back, and also maintain good posture from his glutes and hamstrings. There's just so much going on that to even then, then get that contraction, it's just not really going to happen. So one thing I'll say is just support absolutely everything, and then you can focus on the working muscle. So here we've got a chest supported T-bar row. You could do this with dumbbells if you don't have one, and use a bench. The way you're going to train this, I've spoke about this before, so you don't feel your biceps, you want to move your shoulder blades first, then your elbows follow back. As a result, your hands, by the way, which you should use straps that are connected to the tool, will come up last. So it's shoulders, elbows, and that's it. And you're going to, this is a hard exercise, work really fucking hard. Towards the back end of the set, the way you'll break down in form, we're going to watch here. Even when it's supported, if I'm really trying to send it, I'll be honest, towards that back end of the set, look at what's happening towards the upper back region. You want to try and mitigate that as much as possible, see a bit around, around in there. But where I'm trying to get that last little rep out, do you know what? Sometimes I do curve a little bit and I'm not perfect as well. But if I'm doing that with it all supported on rep eight or nine, motherfuckers are doing that curving of the spine on rep three and four when, when you've not got it supported. Of course you are. So just to reiterate, we're on the pull day where you started, ideally, I would say start with single arm pull down, then go to your that upper back row exercise you've just done, get your two big money makers out of the way, then go on to a uh, shrug, and the beauty of that is you're going to keep your arms straight. So where you've been bending and fucking potentially toasting a bit of the bicep, you keep your arms straight, it's going to be fresh, fresher as you go into now the lat pull down exercise. So fair amount of volume, four very good meaty exercises, but honestly, that's what's going to blow your back up. So <clears throat> as we look at the lat pull down, remember what we're trying to do and just think of the mindset of the single arm pull down. Lats start here, insert onto here. What are we going to do then? We're going to think, we're going to drag our elbows towards our hip. Biggest, re biggest like failure of this exercise is the torso. If you cave that in, contraction is going to be pretty, pretty poor to be honest. If you can keep your chest up facing towards the mechanism at the top, you will be fine. So as we see here, Drive the elbows down towards the hip, contract, bang, up, three, two, one. Notice the tool I'm using. It's shoulder width. Why do we want that? Well, because it's going to align the elbow towards the lat a lot easier. If you, uh, let's see if I can fit in here. If you have a grip that's like this, and I pull like this, the bar, the tool is going to meet my chest here. And look at the gap. Where's my elbow in relation to my hip? All the way out here. What we not get contracting the lat as much. What do we want to do? Bring it in shorter so I can get even more down here because I want to shorten this as much as possible. I want to bring the, the insertion point down to the origin point. Toast the fuck out of the lats. Stop using ridiculously wide handles. People think wide grip, wide lats. It's the opposite. It's literally the opposite. It's so stupid when people say that because you just limit your range of motion and you don't get any, you don't get any more gains it's just harder because it's awkward. So don't, don't do that, honestly. Okay. Nice. I'm not going to show you the rest of that set because we don't want to waste time. So 
that's what you're going to do on your pull day and on your chest and back day you're also going to do the chest supported upper back row you're going to do the pull the pull ups and you're going to do the shrug and that's what you're going to do for that so we spoke about push pull also chest and back day now let's run through legs which i know no one really likes to do but you it's important that we still do train legs once a week for legs why once a week well we don't want to accumulate too much fatigue because you're going to be in a slight deficit and let's be honest we want to build an aesthetic physique if we want to build an aesthetic physique that looks like this versus this upper body has to be the priority volume towards upper body has to be the priority frequency towards the upper body has to be the priority so legs once a week but do them really hard and fucking toast them and you'll be good to go let's go through legs now so when it comes to training legs, I start with leg extension. Why? Because it hits the muscle in the shorter position where you're weakest first. It really does fucking toast off the quads. When you do this exercise, spend a good second at the top. Be slow on the way down. Grip yourself in tight and really just fucking punish yourself. Your ability to train hard on this is your ability to endure pain inside your mind. So do, do get aggressive, do get ready for this, and this will get your quads fucking firing for what's to come next. Now, from there, you would then go on to a hamstring curl machine, hit the muscle in the short position for the hamstrings. But because it's such a boring exercise, I don't actually have a video of me doing it to show you. So we're going to move on to your main money mover that's going to hit the muscle in the lengthen position. So as it gets to the bottom, and this is going to be something that's really fucking loadable, but you can put a shit ton of weight through to blow up your quads. You cannot grow big quads with leg extension alone because it's just not that loadable and heavy. This is. Now, this is a good exercise, but what we, what we want to try and do is improve the amount of flexion we get the knee joint. Because if we can flex the knee joint more, we can stretch the quad more, we can get more gains. You will notice when you do this exercise, as good as it is, even if you get your feet as low down as possible, your hip joint will close up first before your knee joint. So... For the females watching, this is amazing because you will get more glute gains out of this exercise and it's really fucking loadable. So you can bet my glutes are small after I load it up like this. But a substitute to this would be some form of a hack squat. If you haven't got a hack squat, I'm going to show you a substitute for that. You can utilize a Smith machine, bring your legs quite far forward, sit back against the bar and then you sit into this like a chair. Obviously nice and loadable. The only downside is now we've not supported the lower back, which what does that mean? Your lower back could fail before your quads. More than likely, it probably will fail before your quads. So if you've got a hack squat, utilize that. But I would honestly say, if you're just starting out, load up the leg press. So it's stable, it's supported, it's very fucking loadable. It will get you big quads. As you adv advance and progress, this is what you're gonna move on to. Now, I wanna see you suffer and endure some good fucking pain. And this exercise will do exactly that. Here we're going to get a good amount of knee bend, not the best angle to show you the amount of knee flexion we're getting, and we're also going to get a good amount of hip flexion as well. So a very, very good fucking exercise. Load is actually in a better position because your arm's straight and locked out. Strap it up so you don't have to feel um, the grip strength, which will fail first. Chest stays up, and honestly, th this will fucking toast your quads. This is a miserable exercise and one that I want you to really make sure you program. Now... After that, we'd run a set of calves, and that'd be leg day, boxed off and done. The last thing we're going to speak about is how to train your arms. I'm going to give you four or five good exercises that you can follow. So leading with the triceps. For the longest time, I would program overhead cable tricep extension. Good exercise. Downfall of it, not very loadable. Not very loadable means not that much load, which means not as much gains as possible. I've moved on to tricep dips, loaded, weighted, and I've really found the long head of my tricep has started to blow up. Obviously, I'm being very specific in that instance. It will work a lot of, the, it will work the tricep in general. You'll also get a bit of chest. Now, what I want you to do so you don't get a lot of chest, is try and keep your legs, which to be fair, oh, there we go, he's, he's fixed it. Keep your legs as far forward as possible. I'm actually guilty of, I could improve on that myself, and, and I've got the humility to admit that. But this exercise is going to be harder as you get towards the bottom. Get the pause, drive back up. Load this exercise up, and it's going to really fucking grow your, uh, grow your triceps. Picture this as like the leg press for your triceps. The leg press hit the muscle in the length of position, it got down towards the bottom. This is going to do the same. So I want you to focus on that, that length of position as you go down, get the pause, drive back up, and just get ready to put a, a shit ton of weight through that over the coming weeks. Uh, the, your tricep muscle really start to blow up. I noticed that with mine. 
You're also going to pair that with a tricep pushdown. Now look at the tool I'm using here. You may have this in your gym. If you don't, I used to program rope pushdown or crossbody cable tricep extension. I actually changed my stance on this. I would say use a bar or something that has a bigger surface area just because I find you can physically push more down through it and I'm all for loading it up. I've used a rope for a long period of time. My triceps weren't that big. I've switched to this fancy tool that you might not have, but you've got a bar in your gym. So I would say utilize that because you can just physically, because of the surface area of it, push down more, move more load. They're the only two exercises I run for triceps. Uh, run them twice a week. I actually do a few more sets on this to accumulate the volume. Arms, probably you need 16 minimum sets per week, I would say. Um, so you're going to do four and four. Yeah. And that'll give you 16. Uh, so four for push down, four for dips, times two, 16 sets. Now, as we roll into biceps, I want you to do the single arm preacher. But if you look, I'm, I'm the wrong way around on the preacher curl machine. Now, the reason I do that is as you get towards the bottom, because my arm is straight instead of running down on an angled pad, there's no tension on my fucking <laughs> bicep tendon. And I found in the past it really just aggravate that. And that's why I have this straight. But if you look at the setup here, Shoulders locked in and supported, back of the arms locked in and supported. The only thing I can really do is flex my elbow and train the bicep so that so we can get a lot out of this exercise. I've actually managed to progress quite nicely up to 35. I've not got a video recently. Um, but there's nowhere to cheat. Single arm, one minute rest in between each. Now with the bicep curl preacher, it's hardest when your arm is about 90 degrees because of the distance from the load to the muscle. With this exercise, what you get, which you don't get on the other side, if you think when your arm was straight at the bottom, there's no resistance there. This exercise is going to give you that because you think now, you've had to bring your arms to this position here. With that, the cable wants to go, well, down and back out your hands to the floor ultimately. So there's going to be tension on the bicep in the lengthen position, which is really nice because you don't get that with dumbbells. So we're going to use it supported, keep your arms fixed. Keep your elbows back when you do this. Even I'm guilty of them coming forward towards the back end of the set. Bigger not want a pair like that. Now, on the sister day, I do dumbbell hammer curls because I want to hit the forearms. And I also I do this, but pretty much standing with the arms slightly more behind the body. When you're training your biceps, you want to think, I need my arm in front of the body. I need my arm in line and also behind. And I want to either hit it keep the tension on the, on the bottom, keep the tension on the top, or, or it's going to work it in, in the mid. Do all of them. They're the four exercises I use. So preacher curl, seated cable, standing cable, and uh, dumbbell hammer curl. And that is the program complete. And that's exactly what we ran with this client here. Now, why we were able to get such a good result out of his physique is, okay, cool. You know the exercises we used, but what really got the physique was what he did on the gym floor. Like, you can nail the diet, but to be honest, if you don't get it right on the gym floor, you just, you won't look that good. And you can follow that program, but it's how you do and interpret that program. Now, with this guy, I got him to send me form clips so I could perfect exactly how he was lifting. And what did we perfect? We perfected his accuracy. Your accuracy is your ability to hit that given muscle, not everything else. When you're training your pecs, it's your ability to bring your humerus towards the midline of your body, to shorten the pec with the load. That is your ability to be accurate. And you want to be accurate even with intensity. So that means when you're on your last rep, you still maintain brace position, and then you just continue to fucking drive in the function of that muscle, not just getting it up from A to B. That will not build you the tissue. You need to be accurate. You need to have consistent tempo so that you, are, you can be accurate. If you rush the, the, the reps, if you do them fast, one second up, one second down, you just won't get the same time and attention and you won't be able to be as accurate. And then finally, if you don't train hard enough, simply put, you just won't develop the muscle because why would it grow? If you're not putting a certain amount of stimulus, the muscle doesn't need to be that big. The muscle will be as big as the stimulus that you put on it. So we're just going to watch one set, which I believe encompassed all of these factors here. Uh, so this is just a typical uh, chest press machine. Notice the load he's got on, not drastically heavy, but watch the way he does it. Slow on the way down, gets the pause, shortens the muscle. Notice what his shoulders aren't doing. They're not coming forward and all the way out here. He's just simply driving that humerus back across his body to get that contraction. He's getting a pause in the shortened position, 
He's controlling his tempo all the way down, lengthening those pecs, and then he's driving it back together. We'll skip towards the end so you can see the intensity piece. Still being accurate, even when it's hard. Slows down towards the top. Focus, drive, 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 drive. Gets the pause. Again, drives that upper arm across the body. Now you're really fucking working for it. Notice how nothing else is moving in his body. See? That's the set that we want to be doing in order to build solid like tissue. So, you know, that's how we trained the exercises that we did. The last thing we're going to go on to is more of a soft skill. But if you don't, if, if you ignore this one, these, you won't stick to the first two points anyway. Like these are important. Look at these as more like the, the process uh, that you need to do. But ultimately, if, we, if I don't give you the underlying principle that we work so hard on, you simply just won't be able to execute on the first two points anyway. So number three is focus. And what I mean by focus is your ability to stick to one fucking plan, one version of the truth. This is how a lot of people follow a plan. Okay, so if you're starting at A and A was this and you need to get to B and B is this, this is how most motherfuckers will go about getting there. They will set their nutrition plan and they'll set their training plan. Beautiful. And they will follow that one week because it's new and it's shiny. And then when they're doing that and they'll think, ah, oh, I didn't program, um, <laughs> I didn't program dumbbell chest press, but that guy's got a really big chest and he's doing it. So what I'm going to do is retweak my program to read this. And then they start flatlining. Ah, oh, that guy said that we actually just need to be in calorie deficit. So I'm going to change my program and make sure I'm in calorie deficit. And we go to here. Oh, that guy's programmed his upper traps. And yeah, I need to do that. And what about neck training? That's quite common at the minute. And uh, well, I don't want to. I, I actually think I need to bulk. So I'm going to bulk. Yeah, let's, let's bulk. And then, and then, oh, no, no, no. Cutting's good as well. And, 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 and before you know it, this is what your progress looks like. Because you just change the fucking plan week in, week out. Do you know why you change it? Because it's based on your emotion. And that's, that's, the, that's the problem of it. Anyone, anyone here ever tried to like... You, you, you wake up that day, you know you've got a shit ton of stuff you need to get done, but you just don't really get it done. You do a bit of it, and then you think, ah, fuck it. And then you do something else, and, you've, ah, and, and, and you just, your day ends up looking like this. Do you know why? Because if you just live live, your emotions will tell you to sack shit off. They'll tell you you shouldn't really do do stuff. I had this yesterday. So I sparred in the morning and I always spar in the morning and I do uh, chest and back in, in around about lunchtime, in, in about the evening time. And it was a harder spar and I was like, oh, you know what, well, do you know what I should, I should do? I should probably rest and, and then and then I should, I should train tomorrow, but then that'll obviously move everything to the left. And, uh, oh, but actually, would that work actually to, to be better with my training? And I just thought, I was like, stop. Fucking stop. I was like, stop listening to my brain because it's a little bit tired right now. Get ready for the gym at this time. Eat your fucking food. Have a little rest if you need to. Hydrate, go and walk and go and train. And I did. And I didn't listen to my stupid fucking brain because it will tell us to do stupid things because it, it wants to be comfy. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. It's no one's fault. It's just the way we're wired. So we have to fix this. How do we fix this? Well, I've been in this situation. What did I do to solve it? I got coaching. I got someone to coach me to plan my program, to plan my nutrition, because my stupid brain will come up with things three weeks into the plan, and I will change the plan, and I'll never make any gains. So honestly, the way you fix the initial plan of uh, you've got shit to do that you need to do within a given day, but you never get it done, you write it out the night before. You write out what you need to do the night before, tomorrow. Like, I, I, literally, I can show you that right now on here. You do it the night before, to do tomorrow. Wake up at 7 a.m., film, video, script, video, which we're on now, 7.30. So start at 7.30, it's 9.25 and we're rolling through. That, that was what I needed to do. And then I just follow that list. I blindly follow it. I could check WhatsApp right now. There'll be a shit ton of messages from clients. But that will distract me from being able to spit game to you guys. So I needed to make sure I just follow that blindly. That's what I want you to do with your days like plan it the night before, ready for tomorrow. But on the flip side, this is why having someone to keep you accountable is so important because what they're really doing is keeping you focused and stopping you from standing on your own dick. This is why coaching is so fucking valuable. And honestly, like if you feel like you suffer from this, like I, I will shamelessly tell you, 
I have a coaching program. Obviously, that's what we do for these clients. Fucking, if you want me to square your life away, book a call with me right now and I will sort you out. So uh, that, like, it has helped me a lot. And that's why I'm, I'm proud to, to plug my product in these video, videos and tell you, like, you should, you should 100% join the Gorilla Platoon. I think it's a good product. We get good results. I keep you accountable. I stop you standing on your own fucking dick a million times a day. So you can go from A to B in the most efficient time frame, i.e. 16 weeks, and get to the goal. So your ability to focus. Now, why this is important is because you need to develop the characteristics that are going to allow you to build this physique. What are they? It's discipline. It's being able to just stick to something that is hard that you don't see the results like tomorrow in. You need to be able to delay gratification and just apply discipline to things. It's walking around being hungry. It's pushing that extra rep when you don't really want to it because it's heavy and it hurts and it's the third exercise that you're on in the session. It's having the discipline to do that. You're going to need to train the muscle that is disciplined. You have, you do hard things that not everyone likes to do and that will that will boost your ego to be disciplined. I'm not disciplined because I go to the gym because I would fucking cry if I couldn't go to the gym. I'd be more disciplined not going to the gym because it's something I really enjoy doing. So actually, we need to train the muscle of discipline in things that you don't want to do. You don't want to like cut certain foods out. You're going to have to do that. You're going to have to train that muscle that is disciplined, and that's what you get to do when you do this. Consistency. The ability to eat the same foods and follow the same plan over a period of time. Build consistency. That is what gets results. And then resilience. Because, fuck me, to get this lean, you're going to need to suffer. You're going to need to be hungry on days. You're going to need to feel like your body's eating itself. By the way, that's a very good sign. The worse you feel, the better you're going to look. So, it's a good sign. It may not, and you may think, oh, it shouldn't have to be... Honestly, like, it's not forever. You're just, and it's, it's not unhealthy to be burning off excess body fat. And to be sat around 10% body fat, I don't, I don't think it's unhealthy. I don't think it's unachievable. In fact, I think it's quite just athletic and healthy. If you live an active lifestyle for a couple of years, you'll end, I, I guarantee you'll end up at 10% body fat by accident. So honestly, like, it would just serve you to develop that resilience. Now, why is this important? Well, would it serve you to have discipline in, all, in other areas of your life? Probably. Would it serve you to be consistent in other areas of your life? Would it resi resilience? Yeah, probably. Because it means when work is, is not going too well, you still built the discipline muscle to, to do it anyway. You've still built consistency to turn up when it's hard. you still built resilience to fucking take it on the chin and push forward. What about when your relationship is, is not going too well with your partner? Oh, oh well... If you've never, if you've always had instant gratification and never been able to stick something out for the long term, are, are, are you going to stay in that relationship? No, you're not. But that could have been a good relationship with the woman of your children. When if you just developed the muscle of discipline to turn up anyway, even when it was uncomfortable, then you may have just saved a good relationship. If you were still consistent, then you were consistent with her. If you were still resilient, it means that when shit hits the fan. You're actually okay with working through stuff to get to the end to be with that person. Ultimately, if you're not compatible, then whatever. But what I'm saying is it would serve you, yes, in your relationships to have these characteristics. Of course it would. It would serve you in your career to have these characteristics. Of course it would. So actually, by being able to focus on one thing to another, you can develop these three traits. Now, these three traits will turn you into the man that you need to be to have such a physique. That's what it's about. That's why it's important. It's because this guy deserves to have this because he has honest, harnessed and worked on these three traits. He had the tools. He had the tools. He had the hacks. He had the, he had the formulas to get in there. But what was most important was he developed these three traits over the long term. And that allowed him to deserve and hold this style of a physique. If you want it tomorrow, if you want it instantly, you will never have it ever in your life because you're not the person that deserves to fucking have it. If you are here for instant gratification, if you are here to try and get the quick fix and the hacks, you're probably on the wrong channel and I'll tell you, you'll never fucking have it because it was never even about this. It's not even about, it's about what this can do for your life. What can this do for your life? You can sit here now and tell me, well, it will be, bring me more confidence. It will uh, allow me to go and enjoy my body in the world. It will allow me to just navigate life in a completely different manner. Remember why you're doing it. It was not about just the physical lines and the muscle that sat on your body because it's quite superficial, although it's very good and we're here for the vanity of it. It's about what it could bring your life. 
That's where the value is held within it. So don't shortcut to developing the key characteristics because ultimately that's what makes this valuable anyway. It's because you're a man of discipline. No one can give you this. You have to physically go and move the load, cut the food and do it over a long period of time. That's why this is valuable. So do not shortcut cut this. Be proud to exercise this. Love the discipline you know. It's a quote out of Marcus Aurelius's book called Meditations. I recommend you get it. It's very good. Definitely sculpts my life. Be proud to showcase discipline, consistency, and resilience. It will make you a much, much better person, and this is the result you're going to get at the end. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram if you want to just see the rest of the results that we post out. And if you want me to coach you and get you to this point, There'll be a link in the description, book a call, or just message me on Instagram. Whatever you want to do is quicker and easier. I don't mind messages as well. And I'll see you tomorrow.